Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be doing a continuation of our Bolt Action Boot Camp series. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the turn, turn sequence, and the order dice. In these videos, you'll be able to learn how to play Bolt Action 2nd Edition, as well as, if you're a veteran player, you might get some insight from a fellow Bolt Action player. Okay, the turn sequence and the order dice. There are dice that represent each unit on the table. So if I had three units on my German side, I would have three different dice. And if I had two units on my American side, I'd have two dice. And now these dice, now this is just an, a summary. If I take these, I would take all my dice for all my units. I'd place them in a bag, a cup, a bowl, whatever. And then I would shuffle those up and we would draw one die out of the bag at a time and let's say I draw a gray die then that's going to be my German die so then I would hand it to my German player if it was me I would activate one of my German units they would do something and then every time uh, a die is drawn it's placed with the unit that it does something and then once all the dice are drawn and all the units have acted then it is the end of the turn and the dice go back in the bag there are a couple of exceptions to this, and we'll go over that here in just a minute. So the, in the order phase, basically you draw an order die from the bag, hand it to the appropriate player, he chooses one of his units, gives it an order, places the die next to the unit. Uh, if necessary, the uh, like let's say this unit's got a pin marker on it. If a unit has a pin marker on it, when you give it its order die, if it's you have to roll a order test, which is not a morale check, it's an order test, to see if he executes it. And then you go back to one, draw another die, do this, draw another die, do that, right? Okay. Okay, at the very end, once all the dice have been drawn, you return all the order dice back to the bag, except for those that are on ambush or down. So if a unit is down and a unit is on ambush, okay, just hypothetically, those players can decide if they want to stay on ambush or stay down. If this unit stays down, it recovers pin markers, and but then its die doesn't get returned to the bag, and the marker stays on the unit, so they basically lose their next turn because they stay down. If it was on ambush and there was no moving units, and it was unable to shoot, it you can opt to put the ambush back in the bag, or convert this to a fire order. To do that, you roll a die. If you get a four or better, it, they can just shoot and if they shoot it converts to a fire order that ends the turn and we put all the die back in the bag except for the downs and the ones you leave on ambush if a unit is destroyed you got this tank out here it's got it's like movement order and then boom it's destroyed you take this die you put it you hand it to your opponent and uh that's one unit down what i shouldn't say down and that's one unit eliminated, and that's taken out of the bag. It does it does not get returned. Uh, basically, you only get to keep one die in your bag for every unit that's active on the table. All right, now we're going to talk about individual orders and the order dice. Now, this part of bolt action is really what makes this game unique and a little bit different than any other game. Because, hypothetically, if you've got five units per side, one side could technically get all five of their dice drawn and they would get to act all of their units before the opponent gets to do anything. The um, Now, it could go back and forth. you got the ebb and flow of the game. One guy might get a die, and then he's hoping to get a second die, and it actually happens to be him. Then he gets two units to act simultaneously, you know, back to back. And then the opponent starts getting dice, and it goes back and forth. You don't know who's going to act and, how, you know, who gets to act more than the other. It's totally random, and it's... A really good mechanic. I, I'm, I really like it. Now, hypothetically, let's say I draw a German order die out of the bag and I go to apply it to my unit. What that represents is the NCO in that unit is issuing an order to his men. And what orders those are, are fire, advance, run, ambush, rally, and down. And then we'll go into each of those. Okay, fire order. Basically, all that means is you shoot. Right, you roll dice, you measure you measure the range, you roll dice, and you don't get any minuses for shooting. A lot of times, if you move and shoot, you will get a minus. Okay, that's fire, right? There's a 
fire marker on this. Fire, fire, fire. Okay, so that's fire, right? There's advance. They can move and fire. Okay, so they move once, and then they fire. And usually, most weapons have a minus one to shoot when you move. Minus one to hit when you move. Then there's also run. Run basically means you move twice. You move, and then you move. Or you move double speed. You don't get to shoot. You just run. Then there's something called ambush. Uh, they don't move. Instead, they're all like sitting in their firing positions waiting for a unit to appear, it's, appear or move in front of it. Okay, <clears throat> when you're on ambush, you do not shoot uh, until a unit moves. You can wait till it moves out of cover. You could shoot at it before it enters cover. So like, let's say there's a unit here and you go on ambush and this unit crosses the cover and it's getting ready to go into this cover. You can shoot at it while it's not in the cover. It's your choice because you opted for ambush. If at the end of the turn, I think I went over this already, but if at the end of the turn, nobody moves, you wasted a turn. So you can convert this to a fire on a four or better. And then you just shoot and then you're done. The next order is rally. When I issue an, a rally order to this unit, they don't move or fire. They just pause to take a breath, pick up the wounded, pass ammo around, regroup. Uh, basically, they roll and reduce pin. And we'll get into the pin in a minute because that, that'll affect all these orders. And then the last order is down. Okay, down. Basically, they don't move. They go prone, they hide behind the wall, they hunker down, they find a ditch. Because you know these tables are perfectly flat, right? Okay, well, a battlefield is not perfectly flat. So there's probably like a ditch or a rock or some kind of uh, something that they could take some kind of cover behind. Maybe nothing ex special, but it'll help them. And by going prone or, or going down, that basically gives them... Uh, your opponent a minus two to hit them. Okay, now down has a special capability that uh, we'll talk about when we get into shooting. That's in another video. But uh, just to let you know that if someone shoots at you and you do not already have an order on you, so basically you are still free to act this turn, you can opt to go down at that moment. So it's a reaction to being shot. Uh, so you go down, their shot will get a minus two. But then you lost your turn, but you saved your life. All right, let's talk about pins uh, and how that affects you. Basically, if you don't have a pin on you, you can just, and you draw your die, you can just do your order. There's no problem. Okay, we'll start off by how you get pin markers. When a unit shoots at you and they get some hits on you, then you get one pin per unit that hits you. They can hit you 100 times. It doesn't matter. You get one pin. Now, then they go and roll casualties. They could get zero casualties, but you still have that pin because they hit you. If for some reason there is friendly fire, which can happen in the game based on some order checks and things like that, if a, if a friendly unit shoots at you, if they hit you, you still get the pin as if you were fired at by an enemy. The effect of pin. Uh, Pin markers give your unit a minus one morale value. So if the unit is a regular and they have a nine morale value with two pins, they would only have a seven value. If you had five pin markers, then you would have a value of four. As an added note, if a unit ever has a number of pin markers equal or higher, then its morale value, or if its value is zero, it's eliminated. The situation is hopeless. Pin markers also reduce the, because they're all taking, you know, their heads are down, they're trying to figure out, you know, they're trying to act, but if they decide to shoot and they successfully pass the order test to fire, they get a minus one for to shoot, to hit, for every pin marker. Order tests, like let's say I want to give these guys a fire order. An order test will be needed because they have pin markers. Not a morale test. This is a order test. And to do that, it's simple. It's, it's exactly like a morale test. It's just called an order test. Uh, so you're rolling two dice, and you're trying to get less than their morale value. 
Now you know it started at 9, minus the 2 makes it a 7, so they have to get a 7 or less. If they pass the order test, let's say they roll a 7 or less, then one pin marker is immediately removed, and then they would fire, and they would only have a minus 1 to shoot. If they failed, let's say they rolled an 8 or more, then this fire order doesn't actually get followed. What happens is it has to be automatically changed to a down, and they don't lose their pin markers. So they basically fail, go down. So in a game of bolt action, this is a little insight. In a game of bolt action, sometimes it's more important to pin units. Just shoot them and hit them. You don't have to kill anybody. Because if they get enough pin markers on them, they're ineffective. They can't even move or shoot or do nothing. And then if you give them enough pins, they're eliminated. As a bonus, when you're building your army, if you build out a squad to its maximum size, which is usually 10, sometimes 12, if you build it out to its maximum size, you can re-roll failed order test. Because they're, you know, you, you, those two pins don't really mean that much when there's 10 of them. Now, let's say he's got four pins, and it's your turn to draw a card, or a, a, it's your turn to draw a die, and you decide, hey, I'm going to put a down on these guys. Do you have to make an order test? No, they just go down. Down is an exception, but they do not pass an order test, so they don't remove a pin marker. Next, next exception, we're going to go, we're going to keep them with two pins. You want to, well, let's, let's give them four pins. Let's make it severe, and that's why you've chosen to do the, this order. You've decided to go with a rally, right? Your order, you're rallying these guys, and you're trying to remove pins. You still have to make an order test, but you don't subtract pin markers. So, because they're a nine, I just have to roll a nine or less. If I succeed on my nine or less roll, I remove a d6 plus one pin markers. So then I would roll a die, it would be a six, so I'd remove seven pins if I had them, and they would all come off. But then it would be a rally. If they had, well, hypothetically, let's say they had two pins, and I said, screw it, these guys are out in the open, I need to shoot them, and I try to give them a fire order, you know I've got to make my seven or less roll because of the nine minus two, seven or less, but what if I roll snake eyes? What if I roll the die and I roll snake eyes? That's called incredible courage. Not only is the fire order accomplished, you roll a d6 plus one as if you were rallying them and remove that many pins. So snake eyes basically gives you a free rally included with your fire order instead of the one. The other side of the spectrum, what if you roll two sixes? Okay, that's, con that's considered foobar, <laughs> and you roll a d6. On a one or a two, you have to shoot friendlies. It's friendly fire. You place a fire order next to the unit, no matter what order you were trying to give them. And if you have a friendly unit that's within 12 inches of an enemy unit, you shoot them. If you have no friendly units within 12 inches of an enemy, then you don't fire, you just go down. That was on a 1 or a 2. On a 3, 4, 5, or a 6, you panic, and they have to execute a run order away from the closest enemy. So basically, a run order, remember, is double move. And then, if, uh, but if there's some reason why they can't move, like maybe they're a vehicle and they're immobilized, then they go down instead. All right, now we're going to talk about the differences between the units and their morale. Uh, now, there's three different levels of of troops in bolt action. You have inexperienced morale 8, regular morale 9, and veterans morale 10. Uh, inexperienced would be your conscripts, no training, no combat experience. Regular is most of the troops in the in the war, and veterans have special training like paratroopers, commandos, marines, or they just have been in the battle a long time, or SS possibly, or they've been in battle just a long time. Every squad has a squad leader like an NCO. Like in this squad, it would be this guy, and in this squad, it's that guy, right? So there are specific NCOs uh, that lead a squad. If that NCO is killed, then the morale value of the unit goes down by one. So if this is a regular squad with a nine, 
and he's dead, their morale value, with no other modifiers, is an 8. Okay, crude weapons don't necessarily have NCOs uh, designated in, like, one of those three guys could be the gunner, could be the guy, the loader, could be any of them are considered the NCO. It doesn't matter because when a unit with three or four or two even, two, three, four, however many, as long as it's a crude or teamed weapon, if you're down to the last man, your morale value also drops by one. Okay, now maximum and minimum morale. The best morale you can ever, morale value that you can ever have is 10. No matter how many pluses you get, 10 is it. The worst morale you can get, no matter how many pins you have for anything, is 2. 10 is the best value possible, and 2 is the worst. Okay, and the last two things is the retaining of the orders at the end of the turn. We already talked about this, but, I, but it is the last piece of this chapter. You have the ambush and the down. Ambush and down. Ambush. If you end your turn in ambush, you can roll a die. If you roll four or better, you can fire normally. And then you just put the die back in the bag. On a three or less, you do nothing, and you still put the die back in the bag. Basically, the unit lost its concentration. On a down order, at the end of the turn, you can retain your down order. If you do, you roll a D3 and remove that many pin markers automatically. There's no order test needed or anything. But what that does is, it leaves you down for the next turn. Now, ambush, if you want, like you suspect that even though you didn't shoot with your ambush, if you want to hold on to it for the next turn, you can. Sometimes that's smart because uh, you'll put a unit on ambush. Nobody will move in your area because you thought they would come around the building, but they didn't. But you still think they're planning on coming around the building. So stay on ambush. Because next turn, you might not be the first one drawn out of the bag. The, the American might be. And if the, if the Americans get drawn first, it doesn't matter. You're already on ambush. You're ready for them. All right, I hope this helped you out on the order dice and the pins, removal, and how you get them. And there'll be more on that in shooting because uh, that's how you get your pins. But uh, I appreciate you coming out and checking out this video. And on the next video, we'll be talking about movement. See you on the battlefield.